a very warm your internet connection is understood a very warm regards to all the giants of neurosurgery who are staying here and listening to us and uh, i'm thankful to dr samme especially uh, and i can witness his uh, relentless effort to make this webinar a huge success and i'm very much thankful to him for giving me this opportunity and this and uh, and i if i will miss john at this time then i will be wrong thank you john for uh, taking so much pain for us so uh, the cost of facial bundle is despite functional diversity in the cp angle seventh and eighth limb nerves anatomically remain as a unit that is this acoustical facial bundle and what are the canal as not only anatomically they run parallel their pathophysiological surgical complications and hence their outcomes to run parallel before going to my topic i would like to acknowledge my these teachers i learn humbleness to the neurovascular structures from professor mazhar husain i learn aggression towards the pathology from professor atul goel a decision making from dr he made this sentence that uh, if you continuously sacrificing five facial in a row then preferably you should think to redo about this surgeries and not but not the least dr arun uh, from the neurosurgical atlas i learn a lot so a crucial theme of neuro oncological surgeries is not only tumor removal but uh, the neurological preservation too and acoustic surgery is no exception so any surgery obviously it goes uh, with the uh, proper anatomical evaluation the uh, triangular space is located below the tent behind the petrus and in front of the pons and cerebellum so uh, a very small place of cp angle harboring so many structures from 4 uh, 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so many vessels sca ica pica dandy veins cerebral flocculus and all these structures confined in a very small plane but if you arrange them in upper middle and lower compartment then hello is it going on yes yes but uh, uh, marvin so, maybe you... to be unmuted please to mute yourself marvin please okay yeah, okay that's better. better so so if we arrange these uh, cp angle structures in three different compartments upper middle and lower then this anatomical evolution is will become quite become crystal clear upper compartment with the trigeminal fourth and the supracerebellar artery middle compartment seventh eighth complex and the ica and the lower compartments with the pica and the lower cranial nerves and our area of interest in cp angle usually remain this middle compartment so if we go with the middle if we zoom this middle compartment anatomy then we will find this uh, beautiful picture of uh, seventh eighth emerging just behind just anterior to the flocculus and uh, around the choroid plexus so uh, the seventh and eighth complex nerve anatomy has to be understand at the um, at the brain stem and at the internal brain stem the face of exits from the brain in the lateral part of the spontomedial cells just one to two minute anterior and inferior to the entry zone of the vestibular cochlear nerve that we can all it, it is it used to have very fixed anatomy at this place where transverse compartment vertical plate separates the facial nerve anterior from superior vestibular nerve posterior in the lower compartment cochlear nerve lies anterior and inferior vestibular nerve posterior and the internal auditory artery we can see it is going inside the internal auditory canal so whatever the size of this uh, acoustic neuroma the anatomy is not going to change at the brain stem and at the internal auditory canal so how this vestibular coxonoma affect this anatomy it arises from the vestibular component and it used to have the same relation at the seventh eighth complex in the cp angle so superiorly fourth and fifth superior cerebellar and dandy veins lies inferiorly it is the lower cranial nerves and the pica far anterior it is the sixth and basilar posterior and middle it is the cerebellum and the brain stem so what the facial nerve and ica they may have a different positions so like in this case uh sami has mentioned this thing that whatever the tumor size and extension the anatomical relation of the this acoustic facial bundle at isc fundus and at brain stem exit antigen they are remain they remain constant 
Except above these two locations, seventh cranial nerve may have different positions in tumor relations. Here we can see on this 3D size fascia sequence the internal artery artery anatomy, where we can clearly see the facial nerve is lying superiorly, cochlear inferiorly, and the tumor is arising from superior vestibular nerve. That is why the hearing loss is more profound in tumors originating from the inferior vestibular nerve. So how we we have a lot of discussion about the arachnoid relation with the acoustic sonoma. So how it is important? Yasarvil is the first who mentioned this thing that the uh, tumor is arachnoid and it is uh, something, uh, this arachnoid uh, dissection is very important. But since then, the, there remain a lot of debate on these topics. So, which was finally solved by this beautiful paper of Kono, and he mentioned with the electron microscopy and everything that the majority of acoustic neuromas are subarachnoid tumors, with epirachnoid tumors being considerably less common. And he hypothesized and proven this thing, this acoustic sonoma that adheres at the pores acousticus with the arachnoid membrane and the adhesion moves towards the brain stem and that movement creates a double layer of arachnoid and creating arachnoid fold. And how this anatomy is surgically important. So double layer arachnoid encircles the tumor. Neuromas arise here are all contained in the acoustic facial system. Yesterday we had heard uh, Professor Suresh Nair, sir, that uh, CP angle system is not a single system. Basically, trigeminal used to have a different arachnoid covering. Uh, this seventh eighth bundle used to have a different arachnoid uh, areas and the lower cranial nerves. So the rest arachnoid remains unaffected in the CP angle. And it is why this surgery is supposed to be performed solely in this arachnoid pouch. It is important to grasp and move this arachnoid fold towards the brain stem to avoid injuries to the nerves and vessels. So the surgical preoperative planning starts from the radiological evaluation, the size and extent of the tumor. In large tumors, this AP gets acute angulation, elongation, tortuous, and fanning. Their location may vary anteriorly, superiorly, most common, but rarely it may be posterior to the tumor. One should know always. Jugular bulb location is very important. The high riding jugular bulb that is two millimeter below the IAC floor, like in this case, we can see usually asymmetrically larger. If we have a high jugular bulb, then it usually remains asymmetrically larger than the contral. Possible reasons of AB with tumor in 3D orientation. So uh, this is my philosophy that I don't chase the structure which I have to preserve. But yes, I should know where it is exactly. On DTI images, we can anticipate the thing where this acoustical facial bundle is situated in relation to the tumor. Here we can see it is anterior superior in location. So seeing is believing. So right here is uh, just one week back, I had operated this patient to uh, demonstrate this case in this uh, webinar. This right CP angle saw widening the ISC, high riding jugular bulb, and possible anterior superior facial nerve location on DTI. Anesthesia, uh, non paralytic anesthesia under news monitoring is preferred. Facial nerve EMG is most commonly it should be done as our SSCP and AVR monitoring is well enough. The rest of the uh, monitoring depends on the tumor extent, whether you are uh, if, uh, if you are going to monitor this space on 9th and 11th or not, be to kept on lower side to minimize the tumor bed bleeding. So I prefer to operate these positions in lateral posture with a 15 degree head inclination towards the floor and this brings the CP angle and internal auditory canal in my direct view. I prefer a CCPD incision just two centimeters behind the pinna from helix to the mastoid tip and uh, retromastoid subospital craniotomy bordering laterally till sigmoid sinus and superiorly till the transverse sinus. A sigmoid sinus based dural flap and its retraction move the sinus forward and this further open the corridor, making the tumor in our direct vision. And this uh, surgical nuances with start of surgery and after draining some amount of CSR, the brain a little bit get relaxed and you will have ample corridor to continue the surgery. So cisternal CSR drainage relaxes the cerebellum, exposed cerebellum need to be covered. Always a retractionless surgery is preferred to avoid any trauma to the cerebellum. Tumor surface is explored with monoplural clothes for the presence of the facial node because rarely it may be situated posteriorly. The arachnoid fold on the tumor is incised, retracted towards the brain stem, overlying vessels on the tumor surface are 
depopulated after confirmation with the names obviously incised and tumor debulking starts. And so this entire dissection remains intraarachnidal. Staying in this arachnoid plane protects the surrounding structures and avoids bleeding. You can see it is just like you, it will give you a feeling of subpile dissection of hematal hippocampectomy. Just maintain this arachnoid, two layer arachnoid plane. Minimal instrumentation should be used micro deceptors, suction cannula, and bipolar forces. With debulking tumor gets freed from the arachnoid. Here you can see the ICA loop and the lower canal nerves are coming in my view and I'm not trying to even touch them. Because I know this two layer of arachnoid fold is between me and these structures. With the round dissector, it is separated from the arachnoid in piecemeal and removed. And I again quote the study sentence of Professor Meyer that debulk, debulk, and again debulk. And this will make more and more tumor in, in your surgical bed, which you have to remove. So, uh, regarding the bleeding management of these tumors, the surface. Uh, vessels are coagulated and cut only after NIMS confirmation. However, at the tumor bed, this bleeding is controlled with cotton and surgical cell, and no attempt should be made to coagulation at the at the surgical bed, at the uh, at the inferior aspect of tumor towards the brain stem and other aspects. The small tumor vessels here you can see the seventh and eighth complex is visible, which I am going to detether the sharp dissection with the. This I have not attempted to even explore. This came in my view with once I uh, significantly debulked this tumor. The bipolar coagulation is avoided. The small tumor vessels going directly from ICA, supplying the vessels, are they are coagulated in the length and then only cut. And maximum uh, this uh, hemostasis you can get with the pressure with the cottonoids at the tumor bed and continuous warm cell irrigation to, to drain out the vas to drain vas out the blood. So Preservation of the neurovascular structures, capsule pooling and blind tumor suppression should never be done. Gradual intracapsular tumor debulking will create all the room and make the structure fall inside the uh, surgical bed, which you can gradually reduce uh, the reduced tumor bulk will itself facilitate the suppression from the surroundings. A lateral to medial or middle to lateral dissection identifies the AB complex early. A small tumor Attached to the AP and brainstem is dealt at the end. With fine dissection, the last tumor bits are removed, working the level previous plane only. A badly adherent tumor, leave it. No bipolar coagulation in the vicinity of AP, only surgical should be used. And excessive NIMS use may itself cause post of facial weakness, thus avoided. Some small tumor bit badly adherent with the tumor. Then regarding drilling, after doing all these works, I used to work at the internal arctic canal at the last. Because of the high riding jugular bulb, I was quite afraid of using uh, at the internal acoustic meters. So uh, here I use this uh, 1 mm carison. But I diamond bar should be used, reverse bar rotation, a side drilling rather than the tape. And drilling parallel, medial to the lateral to the important structure should be done. And continuous suction irrigation with suction. Slasher step drilling further will explore the liver the tumor. Uh, endoscope assisted resection with angled instruments for residual IC, IOC tumor further helping. In this tumor, there was a small tumor which I explored with the endoscope and I tried to remove it, but because it was a small opening because of the high riding jugular bulb, I and I found that it will be uh, quite it will become counterproductive. So I stopped myself after a few of uh, these tumor beds in one. So labyrinthine drill out obviously make the entire tumor obvious to you up in the canal, but it is not applicable in high riding jugular bulb. So uh, regarding earth, how it is different from seven? Cochlear and internal artery artery are two crucial structures, but their anatomical and functional integrity parallels. They remain runs parallels with the protocols during surgery as the seventh cranial preservation. And a medial to lateral dissection preserves the internal auditory artery, no coagulation in close proximity, and ABR monitoring definitely helps, and it will uh, help you in guiding regarding any uh, wrong movement. So, and the eye is treated with papaverin, soap, cottonites, and gel foam. Here, it was the last point of this surgery. Entire arachnoid is intact. Here, you can see the fifth nerve is visible, seventh, eighth is visible. Arachnid is present behind, ICA is visible, and the lower cranial nerves. All the structures used to have their own arachnid, and I have not even disturbed, I even trying to attempt to touch even them. 
<clears throat> and it was the post of scan. And uh, just five days back, I have updated. Patient is having a uh, house pregnant grade three on day fifth post op. And you can see absolutely unchanged ideogram in the post op picture. A small, very small tumor bit I have left at the badly adherent to the brain stem, and uh, which uh, we can see on the coronal plane, and a very small tumor bit at the internal auditory canal, which I found removing them become counterproductive. So my 16 years experience, I have a small series of 32 patients ranging from 21 to 24 years with slight female predominance. Mostly they were uh, grade 3B, uh, 4A, 4B. Uh, these uh, grade 4A, 4B patients are mostly more than 4.5 centimeter. A complete resection was achieved in the one go in 26 patients, subtotal in six patients. Three of them undergone second surgery, but I last follow up in follow up three patients who refused for second surgery. Few general marks with DIC, but recovered. One uh, patient uh, in developed DIC in way back in 2008 and expired. And one patient expired for unrelated reason 2009, after four months after surgery. Regarding neurological uh, preservation, uh, out of these 32, I used to have data of 23 patients and fifth, ninth, and 11th involvement occurring in three cases, all were in giants, but improved in follow up. In one giant tumor, rather, one uh, patient was having pre op lower cranial involvement, which improved in post op. One brainstem injury I have 12 years back, that patient recovered in follow up. Facial nerve involvement in small and medium sized tumors, except in one eye, anatomically preserved in rest all. Giant tumor in four eye sacrificed because these lesions were more than four to five, more than five centimeters rather. I saved them in four, but in three of them, it was a subtotal resection after 15 to 16 hours of surgery. So uh, functional preservation out of these 21, 13 cases ranging from grade one to four, eight cases, they have complete facial palsy, house pregnant grade six, so out of them, seven were giants. Hearing preservation, five patient improved, unchanged, it remained 15. Out of them, seven were giants and hearing was deteriorated in one patient. Seeing is believing here, you can see this, uh, rather it was 3B uh, SAMI, complete resection, Improved audiogram in post op, and this patient is having house pregnant grade one facial 2 And she's able to hear everything. She can she's she's having a proper hearing. Another patient of large giant left cystic acoustic sonoma. Uh, the post op audiogram is showing little bit deterioration as compared to pre op complete tumor resection, but he is having a useful hearing because high frequency range is relatively preserved in this patient. Uh, another patient of uh, this uh, rather three uh, B. Rather 4A, 4A SAMI, this patient is having a uh, intact audiogram, though it is it is deteriorated a little bit. Another patient of right acoustic sonoma, more or less pre op post op audiogram are the same, and the Simpson and the SAMI grade three, uh, and house Blackman uh, grade three uh, facial is intact on the post op scan. This patient was presented to me as a trigeminal neuralgia and a complete resection with near normal scan. Uh, it was difficult for me to uh, even uh, see, uh, identify that this patient is a post-op case. So to conclude, basic surgical steps remains the same in the AFB preserving strategy. A key message is don't change the structure that has to be preserved, but yes, one should be well aware of its location even before surgery. Walking within an acousticofacial system is the key to avoiding neurovascular injuries. NIMS definitely helps, but nothing can be a substitute for basic neurosurgical skills. Preserving the cochlea is equivalent to seven preservation, provided its vascular supply, eye can eyes properly dealt with. Here, I'm well agreeing with Professor Boyle, sir, that my aim of doing acoustic surgery always remains to preserve the facial and acoustic. And if I remove the tumor completely and in post-op I found the facial is uh, not preserved, then it remains quite demoralizing for me that I have done wrong. It, it, 
does not give me any gratification that I remove the tumor. Rather, I become uh, quite demoralized that I had sacrificed one facial today. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your nice uh, presentation. Waiting for the, any question from the panelist. I begin myself. Uh, what your uh, comments about the size of the tumor and the position of the seven and seven nerve? The size, as it's large, as it's small. What's the difference on the uh, reflected on the it's, uh, situation and the OR? Uh, sorry. Sorry. What the relation between the position of the seven nerve with the size of the tumor? Position uh, in in this patient, which I had shown, it was anterior superior. In all uh, cases, with the, with the tumor is very very large size. It is. is uh, so I, uh, so I do have. I don't have a big series, but uh, I never find facial posteriorly. It was always in anteriorly or anterosuperiorly location. Okay, any question from the panelist or I think, our friends? Uh, yeah. Can I uh, can I ask a couple of questions? Sure. Dr. Anush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, yeah. Very nice. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, very nice presentation and very loyal presentation, I I should say. Well, a couple of questions. Basically, uh, whenever you you are dealing with this one, uh, internal caustic meatus, many times uh, there happens to be a vibration injury. So to, to deal with that one, I think uh, you are using this diamond bar, isn't it? Yeah. And, uh, and second one, do you use CUSA for uh, these tumors, these giant tumors? Yes, exactly. I, I, do, uh, I do use CUSA, I do use uh, micro dissector, I do use even uh, a fine tip bipolar forceps. Here, I would like to make one statement of Professor Goyal that break the tumor and suck the tumor. This lies, this logic absolutely work inside this acoustic neuroma surgery because I use most of the dissection I use with the bipolar forceps. I continuously breaking the tumor with the fine tip and sucking it, breaking it and sucking it. And this CUSA or uh, this uh, bi uh, biopsy forceps, a small tip biopsy forceps. So, but this logic stands very beautifully with the tumor and subject tumor. I'm thankful for Dr. Bell, sir, for giving me these uh, tips and many things, many more things. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. That was a very good presentation. I wish that you continue with the same enthusiasm. And... Uh, you know, you're working in a little bit smaller town in your own hospital. I know that. I'm sure, I have no doubt that you will soon develop into, a, you know, your experience will improve, your increase, your uh, everything will be fantastic. And I wish that you maintain your enthusiasm and continue your work in a very beautiful manner. Congratulations on your presentation, Anu. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It's because of your blessings. Thank you, sir.